What's My Line? Brought to you by Kellogg's. Kellogg's Cereals. The best to you each morning from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? From New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the bright young star of musical comedy, Miss Phyllis Newman. And on my left, a gentleman who many critics, including myself, consider one of America's finest actors, my friend Mr. Martin Gable. On my left, one of America's finest wives and women, Arlene Francis. Thank you, dear. <laughs> and now, back from our mutual stamping ground in Mount Kisco, a squire on weekends and the ardent president of Random House during the week, Mr. Bennett Surf. I staggered a bit on the way out. It's because the panel moderator told me just before I came out a terrible story about a chicken who was misbehaving. And his mother hen came over and said, if your father could see you now, he'd roll over in his gravy. Oh. 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 The man who perpetrated that atrocity is John <laughs> Charles Day. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do not carry lawyers with me, but I'll consult one in the morning. I refuse to accept responsibility for rolling over in that piece of gravy. <laughs> Miss Newman, it's nice to see you with us again. And Martin, always fine to see you on the panel. We have some Pleasure to be here. Very nice and interesting occupations to pose to you tonight, and I think you'll enjoy yourselves. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program, and we'll meet our first challenger at... And now to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Nellie Bird, right? Bird. Is it Miss or Mrs. Bird? Yes. Miss Bird, where are you from? Uh, Cologne, West Virginia. Cologne? Cologne. Cologne, West, West Virginia. Virginia. Nice to have you with us. Miss Bird, may I present the panel? Now, will you join me over here? Do you know how we keep score on what's my line? Yes, I do. Fine, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right. Panel, we can tell you that Miss Bird is salaried and deals in a service, and let's begin the general questioning with... Uh, Bennett, sir. Miss Bird, a beautiful girl like you should be seen in public. Uh, is your service in any way connected with the entertainment world? Yes, it is. Good. Well, uh, <laughs> do people come to see you? Yes. Uh, would you be in the nature of a performer of some kind? Yes, that's right. Uh, do you perform sometimes in theaters and sometimes in other structures? Why don't uh, you? No, no. Why don't well, you no. in tents or something like that? This, oh, you, you're speaking now of specifically of, of theaters or presentation houses or... Or tents or, or, tents. or, or, or state fairs. Or, or state uh, fairs. I think the question was so general that with your permission, we will give a qualified yes to it. Is that all right with you? All right. But I, I want to stress that we're giving you the yes because the question is so generally phrased. Miss Bird, uh, do you do something that requires some kind of physical dexterity? Yes. Might you do this in a circus or a state fair? Yes. Do you ever? Yes. 
Are you a member of the Ringling, Barn and Bailey Circus at no. present? No, that's one down to nine to go, Miss Newman. Thank you. Uh, Miss Bird, you do work for a circus, though, is that no. right? That's wrong. That's two down and eight to go, uh, Mr. Gabriel. Are there any animals connected with what you do, Miss Bird? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Are you ever off the ground in your work? Yes. Um, are you up in the air rather than beneath the uh, sod? <laughs> <laughs> we hope so. I mean rather than in the water. No. Are you up in oh, the... Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. You're up in the air. Uh, so am I. <laughs> are you... Uh, uh, do you perform in any way on trapezes? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Surf. Miss, Miss Bird, do you do your work uh, alone rather than as a member of a troop? Uh, no. Five down and five to go, Miss Newman. When you, are you, how can I phrase this? When you're up in the air, you have to start from someplace. Are you pushed or projected or shot or anything like that into the air? No. You're not? Oh. <laughs> Six down and four to go, Mr. Gable. In the course of your performance, do you go from way up to way down? Uh, what would you mean by way up? <laughs> would you give us just a mean level that you would Well, consider? John, as you know, I'm not very tall. <laughs> <laughs> so that my standards of height might be different from yours, <laughs> unhappily for me. Uh, well, you know, like six feet or ten feet or twenty feet. 20 feet, you mean, would be the optimum height you might expect that would be reached in the exercise oh. of this particular talent. John, you've always been very kind to me and very generous. <laughs> I see no reason for you to be determined to give me a no. <laughs> well, I'm not, it isn't that I'm determined. I just want to be fair to you, Martin. So Anywhere I'll give it to you. from... Oh. I'll give it to you. Seven down and three to go, Miss Fred. Uh, has a wire anything whatsoever to do with your work? No. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Bird, do you ever turn lots of revolutions by hanging on a rope and turn yourself over 40 or 50 times? No. Nine uh, down and one to go, Miss Newman. Now, I have an idea, but I don't want to get a no on it. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. No. Now, we've established that you go up high, right? No, I think what we've established was, the question was asked as to whether or not uh, Miss Bird went from way up to way down, and we got from Martin, the, the concept of 20 feet is optimum height, and he got a no. Well, how, am I safe in assuming I'm going to foul this up? <laughs> yeah, you're you safe go... in assuming you're going to foul this up. <laughs> that you go higher than 20 feet? That's very good. That's 10 down and no more to go. That's excellent indeed, because the passage through the air by an automobile stunt driver would be, as you know, from one oh, ramp right across uh -huh. to another ramp. Oh, yeah. and, uh, You are a part of Rotrop's International All Girl Daredevil Drivers, right? That's right. Ah, fine. And, and, uh, she's all girl, I can She's see all that. girl, is right. <laughs> and you wear a, some protective, you wear a helmet. Yes, we do. And what else do you wear? A helmet and uh, boots. We also wear a uniform. Oh, and you go travel all around the country? Yes. Mostly state fairs and... and uh, state and county fairs. State and county fairs. Well, it's John, next... I, I think Miss Bird was driving right ahead of me coming down from Manchester this afternoon. There was somebody <laughs> ahead of me doing the trade. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do it on highways. Don't do it on highways. Probably the most careful driver on a highway we've ever seen. Well, we hope you have a very busy and, and uh, successful summer, and thank you for being our thank guest on What's My Life. <laughs> meet our second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? <coughs> Bill Weaver, right? <laughs> where, are you, uh, where are you from, Mr. Weaver? Paula's Island, South Carolina. Baldur's Island? Paula's Island. Paula's Island, mm -hmm. South Carolina. Nice to have you with us. May I present the panel? Will you join me over here, Mr. Weaver? You know how we keep score? Yes. Fine, then we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. And, uh... <laughs> Mr. Weaver is self-employed and deals in a product. And let's begin the general questioning this time with, uh, Arlene Francis. 
Is it a useful product, Mr. Weaver? Yes. Is it found in the home? Yes. Can men and women both use the product? Yes. Is it consumed? No. I mean, does it use itself up? No. One down and nine to go. This is not to say, as, as all things made of matter will, you know, in time... Yes. Uh, we all have to go sooner or later. Sooner or later. <laughs> yes. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Weaver, is your product, or ever, has it ever been, alive? No. No? Two down and eight to go, Miss Newman. Would it, uh, Mr. Weaver, would it be used more in one or two rooms of the house rather than in the whole house? It's a very interesting question, don't you think? <laughs> it's a very interesting question. Uh, may I have a small conversation with Mr. No. Weaver? <laughs> That's as long as the ones he usually has with girls. <laughs> uh, we want to be fair, Phyllis. Yes. And we will agree that uh, its use in the house would tend uh, to be concentrated in specific areas and it would not be in general use throughout the entire house. I don't understand. <laughs> no. Could I carry this product around with me? Yes. Is it something that I might use? Yes. If I used it, would I bring it in contact with any part of my body? Yes. Would, would I bring it in contact with the upper half of my body? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Would it be in some kind of recognizable container? Would it be in some kind of recognizable container? You or it? No. <laughs> okay. Yes. No, the product. Uh, well, I, would, I think it would be safe to say that uh, when it was uh, contained, it would be recognizable as what it was and what it is. Uh, is it a product that is sold in the stores as well as by yourself? Yes. Uh, could I buy it in a store that sells things for, say, uh, a general hardware or house store like that? Yes. I could, hey? Uh, does, it have <laughs> does it have anything metallic connected with it or part of it? You mean basically something, a piece of metal or made anything of metal? metallic. Does it have a metallic container or is there any metal connected, any part of it metal? No. No? That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Gable. Does it in any way improve the health? <laughs> I think we have to say there that uh, prudent and judicious use of it could have some uh, <laughs> beneficial... Uh... Is this a product worn? No. No, four down, six to go, Miss Francis. But when it's in its uh, best use, would one hold it in one's hand? No. no. Five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Weaver, you said there was no metal in this product. Is there any kind of cloth in it? Yes. Uh, but it is, it is not, you would not call this something that was worn. Is that correct? That's, That's right. correct. Uh, is it useful for health purposes? Would it improve for, for the health? health purposes? Would it improve the health? In well, I think way, we have to yes, say again that yes again. prudent and judicious use, we would assume, could have a beneficial effect upon the well-being of the individual. Has it got any dangerous elements in it? <laughs> no. None? No. no, I don't think we can call it uh, dangerous. Uh, you, you know, you might, as in the misuse of it, you might Stop get trouble a little bit. Same at the same time. That's, Six out and four to go, Miss Newman. Uh, Mr. Weaver, if I took a bath, would I have any use for it? <laughs> you mean while you were taking the bath? As any part of my bathing routine. No. no. Seven. After the bath. <laughs> Seven out of three to go, Mr. Gable. Um, is this something that's more used by men than women? Uh, well, I... Uh, no. No, I wouldn't say it's more used by men than women. Let us say that it certainly it is not in any way uh, to be considered more available or more acceptable to men than women. Whether the exact statistic is unknown to us, but I think we have to give you a no. Miss Francis? You say that when it is in use, the top part of the body might in some way uh, contact it. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yes. Could you ever... Put yourself in the mouth with it? 
<laughs> would, uh, would it be possible that any other part of the body might come in contact with it? Yes. Uh, when you come in contact with it, is your position other than upright? Yes. <laughs> I'd like to see, what am I doing? <laughs> is, it, uh, uh, is it anything you might sit or lie on? Yes. Would it, be, would it be a good idea, would one get good use out of it sitting on it? Yes, you could. But it would be better to lie on it. Yes. I'm that way. Uh, <laughs> is it, um, when you're lying on it, is it uh, uh, preferably on the floor? <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> Certainly isn't on the ceiling. No. <laughs> uh, is it in any way, shape, or form associated with uh, reclining, with, with, uh, with either resting or sleeping. sleeping, either one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Am I going to rule out that it's a bed? Yes. Is it uh, anything... Uh, that might be used by someone else while you are on it. I mean, would anybody do anything? It's going to get awfully complicated. Wait a minute. Uh, is it in the area of massage or operating table? No. That makes it nine down and one to go, Mr. Now, Sir. There's cloth in this, so it might be either in the blanket or mattress division. Hammock. Is it either blanket, hammock, or mattress? Hammock. Hammock? You something to do with hammock? You told him, so I'm going to throw the last one. Hammock? Very good. I still consider that, we, that, that you puzzled the panel completely. Actually, uh, Mr. Weaver is with uh, the company as Plantation Craftsman. And, uh, of course, this is a happy season of the year for hammocks. I've always been a great lover of hammocks. I used to fall out of them as a boy. I landed on my head most of the time, as I remember. But that they're much safer that now. That explains a lot, John. <laughs> but, <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't run around telling stories about chickens turning over in the gravy. So you can see who fell out of hammocks more, Bennett or Daly, right? Uh, Thanks very much, sir. Nice to have you with us in West Nile. <laughs> We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from... Lord. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger for which the members of the panel are blindfolded. Blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. John. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? One question at a time, in turn moving clockwise. In this case, we'll begin with uh, Phyllis Newman. Thank you. Uh, from that ovation, I assume that you're in the entertainment industry, am I correct? Here. Yeah. What? Yes. Mr. Gable? Thank <laughs> you. Uh, have you ever been on television? Here. Yeah. Ms. Francis? Are you at the present time in a picture that is playing? No. No? No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. But could you be described as a motion picture star? No. What, Ye what? Yes, yes. Miss Newman? Are you foreign? <laughs> <laughs> My mother don't think so. That no <laughs> is the answer to that. Two down and eight oh. to go, Mr. Gable. Did I ever have the pleasure of playing on the stage with you? Uh, you're a perceptive man. Yes, sir. I have the honor to be with you. Richard Boone. Yes. Right. <laughs> Actually, uh, Martin, you played Senator Douglas, I believe, didn't you? I did. And Dick played uh, Lincoln. 
in the, in the rivalry. I must say, it's one of the few times in my life I've thoroughly enjoyed having a play stolen from me. Martin, you were really marvelous <laughs> that show. So were you, Richard. I won't have that. <laughs> well, I also played with, with uh, Dick once, many moons ago. The only time I ever essayed, uh, shall we say, the, the mask and the, the buskin or whatever it is you were saying. Why do you suppose Sock. that was, John? I mean, why it was the only time? Mm. I know. I was very <laughs> sad. <laughs> That's easy. Frank uh, Heller told me. He was very honest. Frank said, you're front no page. good. Front page. That's absolutely Dick not true. He was properly sardonic and quite wonderful as Walter Burns. No, it was a lot of the only time I ever tried to act in my life, and I was the luckiest man in the world. We had Frank Heller, who was a wonderful director and, and fine technicians of the art of the theater, like Dick Boone, to hold me up. And they held me up for a long time, but you couldn't do it forever. You're being too modest. I'm more interested in the fact that it appears that you've got a gun that you're going to put it away now. Next season, you're going to have the Richard Boone show. That's correct. Uh, along with uh, Mark Goodson and Bill Todman, uh, we're making a theater on television with a repertory company of actors. We hope people are going to be as excited as we are about it. Oh, it sounds like a great idea. I think this is uh, one thing that we have needed, you know, and needed badly is, is a good repertory company for television. Well, it's a very exciting thing for me, of course, as an actor to be able to play a different role every week and uh, to not be stuck with being, if you will, the leading man, but uh, being allowed to, to go into uh, areas of, of character work uh, where I think uh, actually I'm better than I am uh, being a blue shirt lead. Now, would you call uh, Paladin, is that a blue shirt lead? No, that's a black shirt That's lead. a black shirt lead. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been paladining for a long, long time. Six years. Will you have regrets? No, I have nothing but gratitude. Regrets? Was, uh... He's a wealthy man. <laughs> <laughs> well, this should be a lot of fun. And I must say, I look forward to it being a tremendous success, because I think it'd be good for the industry. Uh, I thank you. You do everything so well. I'm sure that it, it'll come out well, too, Dick. Thanks, Thanks for being uh, our guest and watching you. I suppose probably Martin would enjoy this more than most people, but what actually happened when I tried that once to be an actor was I'd keep forgetting my lines and Dick Boone and all the other fellows and, and also gals in the cast would have to go and pick the script up somewhere ahead and hope I'd catch up with it. <laughs> it was a long, hard show. Well, you've done, I must say, was particularly with Mr. Boone rather well tonight, panel. And uh, we'll all be back after this word from our alternate sponsor. It's been great fun to see Martin Gable back with us. And of course, Miss Phyllis, you, nice to have you with us again. And uh, on a happy note, let me say good night to Miss Newman. Thank you. Good night, and good night, Martin. Good night, Phyllis. My love to wait out. Thank you. Arlene? Anything you'd like to say to me? <laughs> <laughs> See you later, alligator. <laughs> good night, too, Bennett. Good night, Arlene. John, would you tell us that gravy story again? I think a few people didn't get it. Well, you see, there was this chicken. <laughs> and, um... Somebody got... He got into the gravy, is that right, Bennett? <laughs> now, what I really appreciate is that Bennett has now given me the golden opportunity to prove to you beyond peradventure of doubt that it's his story and not mine, because I don't even know its details. But it's a funny story, Bennett. And may I say for all of us, thank you for being with us on What's My Life? <laughs> Television Network production in association with Mark Whitsum and Bill Cotton. Johnny Olson speaking. The preceding program was pre-recorded.